In contemporary American political discourse, there is no group more reviled than neoliberals and their so-called neoliberal consensus. This, of course, being the belief that there is a political consensus in America of an ideology called neoliberalism. To understand this, we have to understand what neoliberalism is. When most people talk about it, they typically refer to a vague concept of regulations on the market economy, centrism, and social justice. Or, in other words, what basically amounts to the political ideology of the Democratic Party establishment. Most people, both those on the right and the left, have become disenchanted with this supposed consensus. There's just one problem with this. The neoliberal consensus does not exist. In fact, what I describe, then what most people think neoliberalism is, is not in actual fact neoliberalism. To understand this often discussed and even more often misunderstood term, we must go back to the 1930s. The Great Depression brought about a revolution in economics, spearheaded by a certain John Maynard Keynes. Put simply, Keynes, and the consecutively named Keynesian economics, advocated for increased government spending in times of economic recession. And throughout the Depression and subsequent Second World War, this economic theory came to be dominant in the West. After the end of World War II, a Keynesian consensus emerged, but it came to be challenged by a new economic idea, neoliberalism. Neoliberalism advocated deregulation of the markets, free trade, globalization, and privatization. In America, it came to the fore with the election of a certain Ronald Reagan. Yes, Ronald Reagan, famed conservative, and his British counterpart Margaret Thatcher were both staunch neoliberals. And this is where I get to the point of this shorter than normal video. Neoliberalism is not an ideology, it is a school of economics. Its modern day connotation is simply not accurate. Those on the left tend to understand this better than those on the right, but only slightly, as they typically see both parties as being neoliberal. Or in fact, neither is. The Democratic Party has always supported economic regulations, and the Republican Party of late supports trade barriers such as tariffs. That isn't to say that they don't uphold certain parts of neoliberalism, Republicans with deregulation and Democrats with free trade, but to call either party explicitly neoliberal is largely inaccurate. The ideology of the Democratic Party is something closer to social liberalism, that is, support for economic regulations as well as expanded civil rights. Now, I am neither of these things, neoliberal or social liberal, but I still think that drawing this distinction is important, in the same way that it's important to draw a distinction between socialism and communism, or between conservatism and fascism. Language and our use of it is what defines political discourse, and therefore the misuse and twisting of language invariably alters the way that we see politics. As George Orwell would put it, if thought corrupts language, language can also corrupt thought. Thank you for watching this brief video. I've decided to take a break from the more in-depth videos which I've been doing recently because although they are fun to make, they do drain you quite a bit, and so I'll be spending the next few months making videos similar to this, and also some election coverage closer to November. If you're among the large majority of my viewers who aren't subscribed, then subscribe, share the video around, and leave a comment. Having said all that, till next time.